Ladies and gentlemen, we're live. We're broadcasting worldwide on this Tuesday, the 22nd day of September 2015. We do have some guests joining us for about 30 minutes uh, at the start of the next hour. Diamond and Silk, uh, the two uh, very uh, entertaining and informative uh, black ladies that have been so viral on the Internet promoting Donald Trump. I wanted to get them on the show so they'll be popping in with us to talk all things Donald Trump and election 2016 for 30 minutes at the start of the next hour. We will have open phones throughout the full three hours today, and we will cover, obviously, the massive amounts of news. Uh, there is a story up at the top of the Drudge Report, and we'll put that image on screen for TV viewers. Book says that Hillary Clinton is sick and that she has serious medical problems. Well, you can look at her and tell that she's obviously uh, has some serious medical issues. She's collapsed in public uh, repeatedly over the years. She has all sorts of problems. But I'll tell you this, she's sick in the head is what she really is. She is an incredibly corrupt, evil person, and Radar Online uh, is reporting on that. So uh, whether she's deathly ill or whether she is uh, has health problems that she can surmount really doesn't matter to me one way or the other. Because she is politically a very anti-American uh, person obsessed with bringing this country down on record. But it certainly adds to all of her woes uh, that she uh, looks so sick, acts so sick. And if you look at the photo of her in the back of a car when she doesn't have her makeup on, it looks like uh, basically a cross between Aleister Crowley and Mr. Burns from The Simpsons, if we can punch that up on screen, she looks like she's about 15, 20 years older than what she is. And that shows you what working for evil, I guess, will do to you. And it's not that she has tiny wrinkles all around her lips or all around her eyes. It's what's in her eyes. How unhappy, how scared she looks. Because you can look at folks that have fought for good and fought for liberty. They may have wrinkles all over their face, but they're beautiful. There's something empowering about a good person with wrinkles, and they have this light in their eyes when they're old. People that are good just get better as they get older. People that are evil just get more twisted uh, and rot in front of everyone. And I don't take pleasure in watching Hillary Clinton rot. I wish that she wasn't given over to absolute abject wickedness, but she is now a totem, a signet, a figurehead, a masthead. She is the goddess uh, of the modern feminist movement. And I can't think of a better symbol for them than the rotting, corrupt robber baron who tries to act like she's with the proletariat, she's with the grassroots, she's with the people. When she is beyond a purveyor and deliverer of AstroTurf, uh, she has been involved in so many campaigns, keeping drug prices high while she claims she's trying to keep them low, involved shipping blood out of Arkansas for more than a decade. They knew every a container of it had HIV, hepatitis A, B, and C in it, knowing it was a death sentence. That all came out in the lawsuits from the Hemophiliac Society of Canada. Then they were firebombed, but not before Bayer was exposed in court, premeditatedly doing it. These are ghouls. These are monsters. And I say that today, opening up the broadcast, because she's been in the news uh, criticizing a uh, major uh, brokerage hedge fund manager increasing the price of an AIDS pill by 5,500%. So that's one snake criticizing another snake. And then you look at the AIDS pills themselves, they're all part of a larger fraud for something that's a treatable condition from the research I've seen and the medical doctors we've had on the transmission. So it is lies within lies within lies, obviously. Now that said, every few weeks... There will be an article, there will be a story, there will be a scandal, there will be a, a story that through which you look through the crystal, through the scanner darkly, through the rose-colored glass, and instead of it darkening your view, it lightens your view. And I have stared through many a rose-colored darkly, as we all have, but this Volkswagen, this people's wagon story, I love how they'll ban a teapot because someone thinks the reflection of the black top on the silver 
plating looks like a Hitler mustache. Remember that when J.C. Penney pulled the popular teapot? It's like seeing an elephant in the clouds or seeing Hitler in the clouds. So you want to ban the cloud? Volkswagen was basically founded by Adolf Hitler. Hitler designed the Volkswagen. By the way, I've owned Volkswagens. I, I don't, I, just because Hitler was involved in it, why do I care? If I like the car, I'll drive it. The, you know, the car is not inherently evil itself. I mean, if I was a pilot and had tons of money, I'd, uh, I'd probably own some World War II British planes, U.S. and you know German. P people seen collectors flying German Messerschmitts and stuff. You know, these rich guys collect them and they freak out. Oh my gosh, it's got the German Luftwaffe symbol. Grow up. Who cares? Who cares? So they're always looking for shades of what's racist. They're always looking for, you know, brown paper bags are evil. Mother and father is hurtful. But that's a side issue. Volkswagen scandal, at the bottom of the hour, I'm going to cover this because I want to really focus and really hit all the points. You look at this story, it exposes everything. The connections that it goes into. But here's the bottom line, and I'll elaborate bottom of the hour. The nature of smart technology is that it's built to game people. It's built to be a fraud. It is designed to run scams and be very hard to detect. Whether it's electronic voting machines or smart meters in your house. The first big brain trust I saw admitting what it was going to do back in the 90s was Enron. Enron had, quote, smart trading, which would charge you $2, 3000000 million a day in one state alone, like California, more for the power than what it cost. And it had fake trading computers overlaid with programs over the real trading programs that were just fed numbers entered by Enron executives. So it was a bunch of smoke and mirrors, basically, total fraud. And they would charge some days $3 billion extra per day in a gang rape of California. So you want to know what smart meters are. You want to know what smart appliances are, smart cars, self-driving cars. Just think giant galactic screw job, the biggest on the planet. But I'm going to get to this at the bottom of the hour. I'm going to hit some other news first. But here's the deal. Technology isn't evil, but the people designing the modern technology are evil. And carbon taxes have always been about cheating the little guy, shutting down the little guy, taxing the little guy, tracking the little guy, and, and, and diverting from real environmental problems. Every major globalist corporation, here's a prediction. Obama said we'll take 10,000 Syrians next year. I said he'll say 100,000 next week. Well, now it's 87,000, another 100,000, another 120,000. So it's over 300,000. It's worse than I said, but I know their playbook. I mean, it's, it's just 101. I know exactly what they're going to do because I've studied these criminals. They operate like you're completely stupid, deaf, dumb, and blind, and don't know what's going on. You just wake up to the scam they're running, admit they're running a scam on you, you'll know everything. You'll make money in the stock market, you'll know how to deal with the police, you'll know how to make money in, in, in real estate, you'll just live an incredibly successful life if you just aren't schmucks and admit the world government's gaming the living daylights out of you. Because all the smart people tune into this show, but all the other smart people that are globalists, they've just decided to cheat you and use the knowledge that you don't know and hope you never learn about it because they don't want you in on how things really work. I'm not bragging, but, but you don't listen to this show at your absolute insane asylum detriment. I mean, I want you to win. I want you to succeed. I want your children to go to Alpha Centauri's. I want to break the dimensional gates. I want to go to the next level. I want to have a life extension. I want my children and their children to be fabulously wealthy and successful with your progeny. I got such goodwill for you. I'm in love with you. Please just wake up and step into God's blessings that God's ready to give us, but stop being chumps. You got to admit evil exists. You got to admit it's going on. You got to organize against it instead of living in denial like a five-year-old. When you hear smart, think death. Because this is their technocracy rollout. And here's another prediction, just like I told you with the refugees. It'd be up to hundreds of thousands by next week. Now it is. It'll be up to millions by next month. Because that's the plan. Here's the prediction. Other car companies are going to caught with the same program gaming everything. 
because it's not meant for them. It's meant for us to screw us over. We'll be back. We'll break it all down. Stay with us. I remember 25 years ago when I was first getting politically active and involved, when I was still in high school, a senior in high school, hearing the conservatives, uh, real conservatives that I knew, Pat Buchanan type conservatives at meetings say, listen, it's not that we're against the homosexuals. It's that we're against the fact that it's part of a political movement to set the precedent to end the family. Then they would quote different books and different research papers that I later actually read for myself. That's why we can't use the word gay. They want to set the precedent, the people above this group, to control language, as George Arwell wrote, as George Arwell warned. And next, after they're done with that, they're going to promote pedophilia. I remember being at this meeting. This guy was a local lawyer. He's pretty old. I wonder if he's still alive. He knew George Humphreys, the city council guy. They were all involved there. He goes, next, they're going to promote pedophilia. And then they're going to promote making you hand your children over to them. And I just cannot believe how on target paleoconservatives and libertarians were. I mean, these guys, I'd go to these meetings, they knew everything. And they were successful, they were good in business, they were family men, they were city council people, they knew what they were talking about. And talking to the general public, it's like a god compared to a, a sheep or something. And these guys aren't gods, they're just informed. But compared to an uninformed buffoon, there's, there's no comparison. And to see men and women who are aware of how things really work but don't use the knowledge to screw people over, they use it to try to warn people. It's just a total dichotomy because most people that are awake to this decide to join with it. And I can't tell you how many times I've had these people laugh at me on air, off air, or in person and say, you're never going to beat us. Humanity's weak and we're going to use their weakness and take over and you should just join us. I mean, it's so biblical. Well, I will never join the New World Order. And what it really comes down to is they, they are a cult of power. A cult of manipulating words, a cult of dumbing people down, a cult of playing God, a cult of saying your wives belong to us, your husbands, your children. It's, it's like these radical Islamic invaders. Their slogan is your women are ours and the rapes are beginning. And just to see America and the world prepared to be conquered by an alliance of trash makes me sick at my stomach. But look at the headline up on Infowars.com. Salons hooked into the White House, hooked into Media Matters. They attack yours truly every week. They just misrepresent what we say and what we do. Uh, the Houston Chronicle is reporting today. I forgot to send it to the guys, but you can look it up. That I was saying the world was going to end in September. I never said that. We linked to different news articles in mainstream news where people were talking about the blood moons and, and, a, and, a, and a big time of change. And I said, I don't think it's the end of the world, but I think a lot of crazy stuff's happening with the Pope coming to speak and all the rest of it. We should be watchful. And that turns into the quote, Alex Jones said the world was going to end. And then they go on to say, I'm basically a Russian agent, and that came from Russia. I mean, this is the fantastical lying the links they have to go to. But back to Salon, I'm going to cover this more later. I saw this last night, and Kit Daniels wrote a story about it. L Louder with Crowder has a story out on it today. The headline is, no Salon, I don't need to understand the plight of pedophiles. And, and here's the headline, I'm a pedophile, but not a monster. And it's begun. So it's begun. They're accepted NGO, non-governmental organization of the UN. Um, well, I mean, just like I said earlier this week or last week, what do you think Jocelyn Elders, when she was the, that's why I've been bringing her back up, the Surgeon General, you know, said, we need to help the little children masturbate. 
It's about weirdos sexually getting their hands on your kids. Because if they can do that, they can do anything. 4.30.